Hello, coin collectors, and welcome to the DC Coin World International Coin Channel. Here we are with some more coins from Germany from 1949. We did a one Pfennig uh, coin video, and people said, well, what about the other coins from 1949? Let's take a look at all the different ones that they released that year. And, of course, these are post-World War II coins from Germany, which were released by the Allied forces under the um, auspices of the Bank Deutscher Lander. And you can actually see the Bank Deutscher Lander on this one. These ones all face one way and this one faces the other because that's uh, so we can get the values on them. And also there's something else on all of these coins besides the values and that is the mint marks. Now Germany in 1949 had four different mints. They had the D which is the one up here. And let's see if we can magnify that. So you can see the D there at the very top of this coin. It's a one Pfennig coin and these are ears of wheat coming up on each side and there's a D. And the D stood for the Bavarian Central Mint or the Munich Mint. Then there was the F. And the F right here on the 50 Pfennig coin, that stood for the Stuttgart Mint. Next there was the G. Where is that G? There's the G right there on the 10 Pfennig coin, and the G stood for the Karlsruhe Mint, or the Staatlich Munzen Baden Württemberg Karlsruhe Mint. And then finally we have the J, which stood for the Hamburg Mint. So those four different mints produced coins in 1949. And we can actually look up each mint and see how much each one of them produced. So if we want to say look at the one Pfennig coin and we look at the D, we can see that on the one Pfennig coin at the D mint, and of course as you remember D is a Munich mint, they produced 46.325 million. So 46.325 million of these one Pfennig coins were produced at the Munich Mint. Can we look also and see how many were produced in Stuttgart? Sure. 68.2 million. So they made different numbers at each mint uh, based upon uh, the availability of the coins uh, materials. All right. So let's let's look at the five Pfennig coin and we can see how many of those they made at the and if you don't remember, the J Mint is the Hamburg Mint. So the five Pfennig coin at the J Mint, they made 60, almost 69 million of them. Uh, they did make proof coins at these mints too, and those are incredibly, incredibly rare. If you find a 1949 proof coin, uh, it's going to be incredibly valuable. But so at this, at the J Mint here for the five Pfennig coin, we know that in Germany they produced. 68.977 million of them in 1949. Moving on to the, oops, if we can, move on to the G mint for the 10 Pfennig coin. And the 10 Pfennig coin, the G mint was Karlsruhe, of course. And it, it Karlsruhe, they, Karlsruhe, they produced 82.933 million, essentially 83 million of the 10 Pfennig coins. And then finally, if we get down to the 50 Pfennig, we see that's from F. And the F mint was the Stuttgart mint. In 1949, they produced, at the Stuttgart mint, they produced 45 million of these 50 Pfennig coins. And this is essentially the value of this 50 Pfennig is a half of a mark. And they also produced 200 proof coins. And so my goodness, if you have one of these, uh, it's worth an incredible amount of money if it's a proof coin from the Stuttgart Mint in 1949. Now, some people say, well, what about the two Fennig? Where's the two Fennig? Uh, and here is a two Fennig coin, but unfortunately it's not from 1949 because they did not make the two Fennig coin until 1950. So no two Pfennig coins in the 1949 collection. They say, well, what about the Deutschmark? Well, they didn't make the Deutschmark until 1950. And you can see this is a 1950 Deutschmark here. Let's see what mint it is just uh, for kicks. And we see that this is an F 
also from the Stuttgart Mint. And we can see the mint mark on these 1950 and onward um, Deutschmarks by looking right under the tail of the uh, War Eagle here. So there's the F and there's the F there. So no Deutschmarks and no two penny coins in 1949. These, This is all of the coins that they made. Um, and the, of course they made each of these with four different mint marks. Let's look at them individually now and just examine them. And this is a really interesting um, coin because if I show you this coin, you say, well, those, these coins look pretty similar, right? They're both D, they're both one fenning, they both got the leaves on it. But look at this one, 1983. And look at this one here, 1949. Now, we also see another thing on there. And instead of uh, Bundesrepublik Deutschland, we have Bank Deutscher Lander, because in 1949, again, it was the Allied banks that were putting these out. So this stayed, these coins were actually good. These 1949 coins were actually good until December 31st, 2001, as were these newer ones. Now, those of you who know uh, Europe and the Euros know that December 31st, 2001 was just before 2002 when the Euros uh, were released. And so this particular coin was good from 1949, post-war, until the euros were released. And it's, it's a beautiful coin. It's, um, if we want to look at the um, obverse and the reverse, this is the actual obverse of front, and the engraver was Adolf Jaeger, Jaeger, and he also en engraved the back, Adolf Jaeger engraved the back of the one fending coin. Again, we don't have a two, so let's go right up to the five, and we see the five, of course, is the J, and the J is the Hamburg Mint. And if we flip this one over, we see it has the same thing on the back. Well, let's look at that one in the same exact symbol. It's just different size and different value. And so again, it's Bank, Bank Deutscher Lander, 1949. Again, it's the um, Adolf Jaeger engravings. And again, um, we can see that this is the same brass clad steel. So these are magnetic coins. How big is this one? It's a three gram one. The uh, one fennig is a two gram one. So one gram for the two grams for the five fennig. Let's see what the 10 fennig is. Well, there you go, four grams for the 10 fennig. So you could do these by weight also. You knew how much the coin was worth just by how much it weighed. Again, 10 fennig. And again, the same exact back, um, the Adolf Jaeger, Bank Deutscher Lander. Um, in, in, in case you didn't know, I'm pretty sure you do know, but I don't want to insult your intelligence, but this is actually an oak uh, sprig, oak tree growing out of the ground. And why is that important? Because when we get to this coin and look at the other side, you'll see. So Bank Deutscher Lander, this is the F um, and uh, the F, mint or the Stuttgart mint in 1949 they produced 45 million of these uh, circulating coins and they produced 200 again of the proof variety huge value on those proof variety we look it up and this is the first one with the um, reeded or milled rim on it, the 50 is and then let's look on the back and guess what she's planting there it's a German woman planting an oak tree and does that look kind of familiar there? Well, this is also uh, an engraving, but it's not from Adolf Jaeger. This is um, Richard M. Werner, um, and it says Oberserl. So I'm not sure what that means exactly, but it's a Richard M. Werner um, engraving. So she's planting the oak tree in the 50, and it is growing in the five. It's growing in the one, and it's growing in the ten. And let's just kind of go down a little bit here, make this a little bit smaller, and just take a look through all of those again. So we have these ones, these are the different sides of these, the obverse or fronts, and then when we flip them over we see we have the ten 
we have the 1, we have the 5, and we have the 50, all from Bank Deutscher Lander, 1949, and the um, German Republic, post-war first coins. All right, that's all we have today from DC Coinwell International Coin Channel. We'd love to have you subscribe to our channel and leave any comments you might have in the comments section. And remember, no Deutschmarks in 1949. They didn't come until 1950. And no two Pfennigs in 1949. Again, they didn't come until 1950. Have a great day from DC Coin World International Coin Channel.